So now that we've completed our very last piece of step flashing, we can put on this top pan flashing. I've also called it an apron flashing. And that was this guy right here that we made. And it's just a 12 inch piece with a five inch leg. And this piece is going to lay just like this. And we're gonna take and make our 45 degree line, snip that and fold this down as well. And as you can see moving up, every piece of uh, flashing is on top of the previous and any water that gets on top or even underneath is gonna end up down at the gutter where we want it. So Carl's made his mark there and I'm gonna make my mark right here. And I like to, you can eyeball this, but I like to come in with a speed square, get a nice hard line to cut on. On both sides. And again, you always snip down to that corner. 45 degree angle every time, right down to that corner. All right, in doing so, we can make sure we're lined up on both sides. And the flat piece goes down onto the roof and the upper piece gets bent tightly around the chimney. And the hardest thing is making sure that's a nice tight bend. So we just hand bend it to make our mark, then we pull it away and make sure it's good and tight. And again, we can flatten out these points a little bit. And this point is gonna be a little bit too long, so we're gonna lay it down and mark it and then cut that point off where it goes beyond the uh, flashing here. So this piece is good, nice and tight. And again, the only place we're gonna nail this is up in the corners, because anytime we put a nail through flashing, that's a potential leak. We'll do one at the center as well. So we've got that piece knocked down into place. Now at this point, we're ready for our top shingle, which is notched around the whole works. And as you can see, we've taken about a two inch notch, 20 inches wide, and it will slide right down over all of those. And looks like we need to have a little bit deeper notch. So we're gonna notch that a little bit deeper. And I use an old pair of snips that work with aluminum and shingles, so. but you wanna make sure you're not real tied up against the chimney on the back here, because you can trap, trap debris, and we wanna make sure that debris can fall out of way, get washed out of this piece of flashing. So flashing's cleaned up, we'll test this fit again. And we're pretty good right here. Now another note here, let me pull this shingle, ba shingle back. Uh, this is the other vulnerable corner. Now before I would've set this flashing, I would've put a nice bead of butyl rubber caulking right in that corner and then set this down because that is our only, only vulnerable point. You can almost see through there just a little pinhole. So we would have sealed that up. Then our shingle comes down, make sure we're overlapped appropriately. Now here's a common mistake. You don't want to go and nail this shingle off like normal because my flashing's here and I don't want to penetrate that flashing. So I'll come within six inches and then at the top of the shingle, I'll nail it up here. And then back down again. The reason for that is when we get heavy rain or melting snow and ice, that water can get back up underneath this flashing. And if I've nailed through here, those are gonna be drips because this is gonna fill up with water. Water will back up and get through those nail holes. So we're gonna make sure our nails don't penetrate this base flashing. And at that point, we're ready for our last shingle. And here, this is high enough that we can nail it in a normal fashion without penetrating that piece of flash. So we can go ahead and get 
All right. So now we've got the completed base flashing installation. To recap, what we have is we have at the very bottom, we shingled up two courses of shingles. Then we laid in our apron flash. And we worked our way up with step flashing the first piece, cut it a 45 and bent around the corner, all the way up. The last piece of step flashing, again, bent around the corner. And then we're ready here for this top pan flash, which we've bent around with the 45. And again, our only vulnerable points are this pinhole and this pinhole, which would be sealed up with butyl rubber caulking as we set the flashing into place.